It is probably safe to say that most folks in the country have had their eyes on one of three of the biggest stories in America over the past few weeks. We've had the continuing impacts of the Delta strain of COVID. We've had the U.S. withdrawal and the Taliban's return to Afghanistan, or more recently, the damage and the devastation that was caused by Hurricane Ida, all the way from the Gulf Coast, all the way up through the Northeast, really. And even here on How the Heck, we did something a little different. We stayed hyper-focused, and we committed an entire two weeks worth of shows to Afghanistan ourselves. But believe it or not, folks, there's actually more going on in America than just those three stories. I know it may shock you to hear it, but the news media doesn't always cover everything that's happening. In fact, there's enough going on in California alone this week to fill a normal 24-hour news cycle. Wildfires are tearing all through the eastern parts of that state at a rate that has not been seen in decades. Lake Tahoe is under an evacuation, for example. Um, And the California governor is worried about more than just the state burning down. In fact, heat is threatening his political career, too. He's just two weeks away from the most important election of his life. Gavin Gavin Newsom, the governor there, is finally taking the recall election that's trying to oust him seriously. But what in the heck is a recall? You ask. And you know what? It's not a dumb question, folks. If you live in California, it may sound dumb. If you live in a few other places, it may sound like a stupid question. But even though this is the second gubernatorial recall in California in as many decades, and even though it's coming less than 10 years after they tried to do the same thing in Wisconsin, the entire phenomenon of recalling recalling elected officials, is really quite foreign to most Americans. In fact, California is one of only 19 states in the whole country that even allow voters to vote their elected officials off the island. So this week, Politicon is excited to welcome an expert on these types of elections to kind of help us understand exactly WTF is going on in California right now. Joshua Spivak is a senior fellow at the Cary Institute for Government Reform, and he literally wrote the book on recall elections in America, recall elections from Alexander Hamilton to Gavin Newsom. I'll ask him exactly what the arguments are for and against recalling duly elected public officials. Does it help democracy or does it just divide us further? Will Gavin Newsom end up being like former California Governor Gray Davis and lose his job as a result of the recall? Or will he come out more like former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker and survive it? Does the process for recall of elected leaders just mean that some politicians end up in a never-ending cycle of campaigning? And if some places are prone to just more elections because of more and more recalls, how the heck are we going to get along? Are you in California? Yes, I'm actually in the East Bay. Okay, Oakland, that's, where you, that's where you are from, yeah? No, I'm actually from Brooklyn, but because uh, my wife um, uh, moved out, she, got her, she was getting her PhD, so I moved out here uh, after I'd started studying the recall. Just- Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate you explaining this to a recall ignorant person, me. Okay, yeah. Well, that's pretty much everyone. You know, it's, it is a weird thing. So. I mean, I guess it is sort of, I mean, it, it is sort of a weird thing, especially if you're like me, you're from North Carolina, we don't do these. Um, and the idea of them is, is foreign, but they've not, you know, they're not news. I was in um, California doing American Idol at the same time that Gray Davis was campaigning to save his life um, in California. So I'm I'm familiar with recalls only because I was present during the last time California tried this. Um, And and obviously we saw Scott Walker's uh, go down in Wisconsin a few years ago, or that's been a decade ago now, I guess. But um, it is strange. And I guess, I mean, I just kind of what made you of all the political things to study and be interested in? Why recalls? So I was doing my master's thesis. Uh, I was doing my master's in the 90s, the late 90s. And somebody and my friend gave me a paper that said, 
uh, that was talking about a recall and it said there hasn't been anything written on recalls in 20 years or 30 years. And I thought, oh, great, there's something there's, to write on. My thesis. <laughs> and then somebody wrote a book on it. In oh. the meantime. But they haven't, uh, but I, I wrote the master's thesis. And there was also these great recall fights in 1995 in California with Willie Brown. Mm -hmm. who's still in the name is in the news enough. Right. So uh, that, you know, that actually attracted me. If you read about that one, it's just, it's what anyone who likes politics would, would love that type of fight. He, the Republicans had a majority. They won a majority for the first time in 25 years. And he managed to convince one person to switch. So they recalled that person. And then he managed to get another Republican to switch and they recalled that person. So it was just like this crazy moment. So it's sort of, I mean, it's, I, 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 I get in trouble with uh, my producers often because I relate everything back to North Carolina politics. But I do, I, I will say that one of the things that has happened in North Carolina in the past decade or so is that rules have changed. As Republicans took control in 2010, they started changing the way county commissioners were voted for because they felt that doing them all at large would make it easier for Republicans to get elected. Well, that didn't work. All Democrats got elected. So the next time around, they changed the rules again. And it really upsets me, um, as it should, I think, most people, the, the changing of the rules as we go. How are recall elections not essentially the same thing? How are they not just sour grapes where people are upset because they didn't win and therefore they get a petition together to do a do-over? Well, they're, they're very old and they are, in some ways they are that, but in other ways they're a provision, much like an election, where you know you get a new chance to vote because enough people signed these petitions. So uh, one of the reasons that some places adopted recalls was because they also, at the same time, extended terms. You know, in a lot of places, there were two-year gubernatorial terms. Uh -huh. So in 19, you know, the, Rhode Island was one state that did this. They said, okay, let's give you four years, but let's also have an option to pull you back if we want to. And that's what the recall is. Do those states like Rhode Island or California, do they not have in place the same sorts of impeachment rules that the federal government has or that other states have? Uh, most of them do. Uh, one notable one that doesn't is Oregon. Uh, they don't have any impeachment and actually a recall helped push out the governor, a uh -huh. recall threat, I should say. Um, but Generally, it's simply that it's uh, a gun behind the door. That's what it was called um, at the time by Hiram, by the progressives who, who put this recall in place. So why would recalls be better than using the impeachment process in some of these places? If you're talking about, if you're talking about California, because I do eventually want to get into the specifics of what's happening right. there, but if you're talking about California, why would, would, a, would allowing... The number, I mean, I think it's, what is it? Is it 20%? How many? You know what? How about we do it this way? How it's, about I pretend I know what I'm doing here with hosting a podcast and we take it back for a second? I'll get in, I'm getting too fascinated. Tell us exactly what's going on in California. Gavin Newsom is being recalled because how many people signed a petition? And so, I'll let you take it from here. Okay. Um, so in California, the you have the lowest voter signature requirement of any governor in the country, and only 19 or 20, it's not clear, states require a gubernatorial, uh, allow for recall, uh, recalls of governors. So California's total is only 12% of turnout in the last election. Now, that's still an enormous amount of signatures. It's almost 1.5 million. But other states, so Wisconsin, for instance, had 25% of turnout in the last election, which is obviously quite a bit more. California also had a lot more time involved. You were allowed 160 days to get the recall on the ballot. In Wisconsin, you needed, you only got 60 days. In this case, the reason the recall actually worked was not just because they got 160 days, it's because due to COVID, there was a lawsuit and they got another 120 days added. It, without those 120 days, they weren't getting this recall on the ballot. So only 12% 12, 12 or 12 and a half, remind me, say it again. 12% of 12 turnout. 12% of turnout from the last election have to sign a petition saying that they will support a recall election. They don't even really have to be people who want to vote the particular governor out. They just have to be willing to support the, the recall, correct? 
Exactly, exactly. They so, could be so, in favor of it. Right. So presumably it could – and, you know, I'm assuming – a lot of people might sign things at the grocery store that they're not quite sure what they're signing on to and don't pay attention to as much. I, 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 so anyway, so they've done that in California. And now, ostensibly, Gavin Newsom has to essentially run for, run for election again because he's not running against a particular opponent, though. He's running now against anybody Himself. but. The two options are Gavin Newsom and essentially – Anybody but Gavin Newsom. Um, exactly. Not and, Gavin Newsom. And then so, in California, tell us what happens next. Right. So uh, in, some st- in some places, there is, there, that provision does not exist. It is a new election. That's what we saw in Wisconsin with Scott Walker. In some places, the lieutenant governor would wa- uh, step in as governor. So it is quite different. In California, there is a replacement race. And Gavin Newsom is not allowed to run in the replacement race. In some places, actually, the person who's removed is allowed to run. We saw this in Massachusetts in 2018. A mayor was kicked out, ran in the replacement race with five other candidates, and replaced himself. Uh, so it could happen. Uh, but in, in California, in, uh, you're not allowed to run. So it could be whoever wants to run. And the, the amount of money and signatures needed to get on the ballot is very little, $4,000 or so, 80 signatures. Same thing as in a regular election. You know, the, there's just not a high bar. Um, and so the result is that Gavin Newsom has 46 different candidates. Now, the criticism here is Gavin Newsom could lose by 49.9% and he could replace, be replaced by somebody who gets 3% of the vote. How many how many percent did Arnold Schwarzenegger get in, in 2003 when he won? He got 48 percent. He, he, so he came really close to getting yeah. close to a majority. He got close to half. He came close to an absolute majority. Actually, he did better than Gray Davis did in the recall and than Gray Davis did in his election in 2002. And then he went on to be reelected um, as governor because people seem to apparently like him enough to vote him back in a second time. Um is there a – do you think there is any sort of false or misplaced confidence that people have because the last time they did this, they ended up with a governor who wasn't completely you know, anathema to the, to the rest of the state? They ended up with a, gover- a, a governor that most people were willing to work with. Um, has that lulled people into a sense of complacency? Uh, no, I kind of think most people have moved on from that. I don't know that it really had such a great impact on people's thoughts about the recall, except, wow, that was a weird thing that happened 18 years ago. Uh, I think there's a, a very different dynamic to this recall. And, you know, there is – It's a. it feels like a much more partisan recall and so much why more so? about so one why, issue. Why, why, is, why do you think or why – I mean, there's not in the recall – uh, mandate, I guess, anything, any one specific thing that, that says, here's why we want to recall Gavin Newsom. Why were Republicans able to get enough signatures to vote against Gavin Newsom, who won his election um, to the seat initially by a pretty healthy margin? Why or how were they able to get enough people to sign on to this, to make it an actual race, and then to, you know, make it somewhat competitive, what's, what's the beef that people have with him? Well, there's a, there's a couple of factors here. So the beef, the, the thing that really pushed this recall was COVID, was the lockdown vote. But the real reason he, it got on in, in many ways is that while California is an extremely blue state at this point, it is very democratic, uh, there's, it's also has many, many Republicans in it. So Donald Trump lost by 29% in 2020, you know, got blown out of the water, but he still got 6 million votes. That was the biggest state by voter total of any in the country, bigger than Texas, bigger than Florida. He got more votes there than he got in my home state, and he won my state. So uh, yeah, exactly. (laughs) I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, You need 25% of those 6 million people to sign to get this recall on the ballot. So the, the ability to get it there was there, was, you know, just clearly obvious and clearly blatant. So the, the big problem, of course, is the next step. OK, he got six million votes. Well, Joe Biden got over 11 million. So could we win? And that's, a, you know, a tougher challenge. Well, can they? I mean, is it, is it possible? I know most of the polls right now. Well, I think there was a poll put out 
today or yesterday that showed Newsom had gathered a little bit more steam and it looked like he was spreading his margin. But for a week or so there last week, the week before, um, the polls were pretty neck and neck, not necessarily because of a lack of support on on for on Newsom's part, but because of a lack of enthusiasm, are, are Newsom supporters going to be willing to actually vote in a in an election like this? Well, this is this is really the challenge. So, can Newsom lose? Absolutely. Recalls work very well uh, to remove people in the country over the last ten years. About sixty percent of recalls have resulted in removal, and another six percent have resulted in resignation. In what? California, the totals are over three quarters. That, which is, you know, you compare it to re- re-election really? rates. Really? So rates California has like- – I'm sorry. I want to stop you real quickly just to get a grasp on that, that statistic you just gave me. Three-quarters of California recalls are successful is what I just heard. Is that right? Yes. I mean the, 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 the bar is getting into – on the ballot. But once you get on the ballot... So California does this relatively often. We're hearing about it because it's a statewide gubernatorial race, but I'm assuming you've got a lot of city council, county county executive type positions where this happens more often. Right. It's school boards. I mean, it's not so often. There's only been about 110 uh, that have resulted in an election in the last... 10 years and another 20 <laughs> or so. That's 10 that every year, in. Joshua. <laughs> That's right, a lot. <laughs> you think, about, think about how many people, how many uh, offices there are in California. There are maybe 10,000. Again, again, you're talking to, to me and, and a lot of people in the other 31 states in the country who just like, this is not something we do. You vote, right. that person wins, and you suck it up and deal with it for the next two or four or however right. many years that that person's in office, right? So well, North Carolina actually did have a – it does have a recall law for some localities. It actually had a really uh, interesting recall in the 60s uh, over um, oh, I went around swimming around pool integration in a town <laughs> called Statesville. Oh, I know uh, Statesville, was, but I don't go – I don't swim there. Um, right. <laughs> I guess my point but, – but it just – it doesn't happen often, but it clearly happens a lot there. You're saying it ha- it's successful 75 percent of the time. That does not bode very well for Gavin Newsom then in this particular one in two weeks, right? Well, that would be one stat. But the other stat is that Newsom has this huge advantage in, uh, of voters. He has – he's gotten people suddenly motivated. Uh, he just needs to get people to turn out. Uh, how has he gotten it? Well, generally, COVID, I'll show you. I mean, the, people can't view it on, on – uh, on the podcast, but I got this one mailer. It's the only mailer I've received. And normally in California, you receive tons of mailers. And the mailer says, uh, with Delta surging, Governor Newsom is protecting California, requiring vaccination for healthcare workers and school employees. All the Republican candidates will eliminate vaccine and mask rules, which could force schools and businesses to close. This is their issue. Uh, so while COVID was the reason that the recall started, for Newsom, it is now the reason that the recall should be defeated. And I think a lot of voters are in favor of that. Uh, Democrats are really now strongly on this position. Uh, shutdowns were a motivating force for one side. Now it's the opposite. That one side did not want the, the, the conservative right. one side. side the Republican side did, did not want shutdowns. But now Democrats don't necessarily want the shutdowns either because they but, want, but they Democrats want, to get back want together. people. Right, but Democrats want people vaccinated. They want masks. They want the rules to be followed, and the result is a good political issue for the party. The and last time, enough, the last time you did a recall in California, they did not have nearly the extensive mail-in balloting as you do now. Every every California voter, am I wrong? Correct me, please, if I am. Every California voter who is who is registered and eligible is mailed a ballot now. Is that right? Yes. So that was also from COVID, and that should really uh, help Newsom because Newsom wants higher turnout. If more people vote, there's a better chance he's going to win because Democrats are 46 point something percent of the. How much does this voters. cost the state of California? I think it's now 215 million, is what we were told. In, in state funds, not, not campaign yeah. funds from the candidates, but in state funds. So 215 million have, has been spent by the state in order to put this election together. Um, and, and, you know, arguably it could very well end up with nothing coming of it except for $215 million being spent 
to keep the governor exactly in the same spot that he's in and has been for the last two years. Are recalls, I mean, you've, you're a supporter of recalls, not just because you sort of like them as a curiosity, but, but, but you think they're good for democracy? Well, I don't know that I'm a supporter. I'm really somebody who watches it and tries to figure out what it means. But I do think uh, one thing to really consider is that the recalls were approved by voters. They were voted on and in almost every case is overwhelmingly decided this is something we want. Nobody voted to say we should have a filibuster law. Nobody really even voted to say the Supreme Court should decide on the constitutionality of uh, of laws by passed by Congress. You know, there were different things that happened, but nobody, no voter said, let's do this. But recalls, frequently against opposition from political figures and others, uh, were approved. In Minnesota, they voted on it in 1996. 88% of the people voted to approve a recall. In New Jersey, 75%. And when you in say Cal- to approve a re- recall, you mean just in general to approve the process of recalling? Exactly. Not, not a specific person. Right. And that so is was, happening in California, a- you've said, that they've, they've chosen that they want to keep that? Well, they chose it in 1911. It was a major election, maybe the most important uh, California legislative session in history. Uh, And they voted. And one of the things they did was they adopted the initiative, the referendum and recall. And so 76 percent of the people came out to vote on this ballot measure the next year after they had elected Hiram Johnson as governor. And the result was they really wanted this process in place. Well, people don't necessarily want to give up a power once it's been given to them, I'm sure, right? You've you've been told you have the ability to recall elected officials. And clearly California's got a penchant for it. They're doing 10 a year um, in some form or another. Um, But do you think people really take them seriously? I mean, why did Governor Newsom not take it seriously? He didn't necessarily take this recall seriously until how long ago, would you say? Just a few weeks ago, yeah? Yeah, I, I may, he might have taken it seriously a little while ago just by fundraising, but he certainly didn't when he was facing uh, the when he had a chance to kill it in lawsuits, when he had a chance to put a D next to his name. He's, he's on the ballot. He's not recognized by party. So, yeah, I don't know why he wasn't as serious, except for the reality that there have been 55 attempts in California history before this, and this is only the second to get on the ballot. So it's really hard to do. Well, so, so and, and you said just a few minutes ago that the, the biggest step, the biggest challenge is getting it actually on the ballot. Um, but if he didn't take he didn't take it seriously, then are, is there is there a challenger um, that you think has uh, has had the correct strategy? I mean, I know I don't want you to go through and parse through however many are on the ballot. How many are there? Hundreds. Um, but are, are there <laughs> how many? 46, though a couple have that's dropped still, off, but they're still on That's still the more than I would read all the way to the bottom of. Um, <laughs> are, there, are there people who have handled it, candidates who have handled it with the same seriousness, say, as an Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, one candidate has stood out, Larry Elder, uh, a Republican No, I asked for people culture. serious. <laughs> right. Well, he's the one who's going <laughs> to— kidding. That was there's rude. a great chance he will win the, nom- he will win the replacement race. So if Newsom is removed, he would be the governor, uh, most likely. He's he's won every poll. Has that helped Gavin Newsom any at all, though? I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger was not someone who was who who most Californians were afraid of. I mean, even if they did not think he should be governor, they didn't think in 2003 that he was someone who we needed to rush to the polls to protect ourselves from. We'll give him a shot. He's the he's the Terminator. He's the kindergarten cop. We'll give it a try. But with but with Larry Elder being so divisive and really almost, you know, an acolyte of Donald Trump. Has that motivated that specifically, him being such a divisive character and being so close to winning that replacement race? Has that motivated more people to show up perhaps for for Gavin Newsom? Has it helped him more than hurt him? I think it's been the best thing for Newsom, best thing Mm -hmm. for Elder and for Newsom. Uh, He needed somebody to hit. At At the time he was hitting Trump, but Trump is not on the ballot. But Elder is a good comparison. He doesn't want it to be Newsom versus Newsom. Newsom versus Elder, Newsom is winning, you know, 99,000 times, you know, out of 100,000. He's just, this is going to be, a, that's a race that he could win. So the more he could play it as 
me versus this conservative talk show host, the better off he is. Is uh, is Larry Elder running a campaign that is pro Larry Elder or one that is anti Gavin Newsom? I think it's both. Uh, you know, it was more pro Larry Elder, uh, and it was actually an interesting campaign. What he did was he jumped in at the last second, the last possible moment. He said, "I'm I'm running," and many people didn't run. The the forty six is actually a low number because there was a law that said you had to release your taxes. So probably a lot of people said, ah, forget this. Uh, Elder sued over the law, had the law thrown out for recalls. And so he was the only one who didn't have to release his taxes. Uh, It was a good moment for him. Uh, And he immediately overawed all the other candidates, the San Diego mayor and others. Now, it's possible none of these people really had the attention. You know, Schwarzenegger was a big name. Popular, as you said, he there was nobody who was offended particularly by Schwarzenegger. Right. Uh, not so with these group of characters. Uh, but you know, let's say Kevin Faulkner could have been an okay, what I'd call a replacement level politician. He, he was mayor of San Diego, last Republican mayor of a million uh, person city, uh, but he just didn't catch fire. So Elder was able to catch fire. Well, he, I mean, he was not as combustible either as Larry Elder, correct? I mean, <laughs> That's in, in, true too. in a race uh, with 40 plus odd opponents, um, isn't the squeakiest wheel going to be the one that gets the grease? I mean, is California's replacement ballot or immediate, real, uh, immediate election on the same ballot, is that the healthiest way to do recalls? You talk about other states that have different systems. Is this system of saying yes or no to the governor and then immediately picking their replacement from a list of, you know, dozens, is that a good way to handle this process? Well, it's not clear which is the, the best way. Uh, so as I said, some could have a new election. Some could have this replacement race on a different day, but that's, you know, doubling the cost. So do you really want to do that? Uh, so it this is the problem really is that it could result in a, you know, a, a minor candidate who only wins 3% of the vote getting this election. And it has had that effect in other races. In 2018, there was a state legislative recall, and the candidate who was who lost, Josh Newman, uh, got 16,000 more votes than the candidate who replaced them. Of course, Newman came back in 2020 and beat that person. So, you know. Does, does this type of I mean, it is a campaign. It is a race. Does it affect the way state government works after September, after mid-September when this um, election goes down? Does does Newsom have less clout in Sacramento than he did prior to this or or more? I would think more because anytime you win an election, you're doing better, you know, and especially because he's going to run again in 2022. Uh, he wins this. Maybe, and if he wins this by a good margin, maybe there's nobody running against him of any note. Maybe this is enough to win 2022 right here, right now. So there's a risk, a high risk, high reward for Newsom. He could be kicked out, but he could also just be a Democratic hero, take over, take reelection, maybe help out down ballot. Uh, the Republicans, you know, even though Donald Trump got 29, lost by 29%, the Republicans actually did well in California in 2022, 2020. They won four congressional seats, first time they had knocked out an incumbent since 1994. Uh, so it was a good moment. Could those now be in jeopardy because they can't get anyone good on the top of the ticket? Um, any surprises that you might predict? And what's what's the what's the stripper or the the well, we'll call her a model. What's her name? Who's running? Angeline. 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 Any chance she might pull out an upset and be the next governor well, of California? Who, who knows, right? That's uh, you know that would be a good. That would certainly be interesting. I and mean, there is one Democrat. The, the he's not necessarily a Democrat of note, but he's a YouTube personality who's a Democrat. Mm-hmm. So Kevin Pathrath, he uh, he would be the one who would pull it out, maybe if things. But, but systems. I mean, but situations like this, where where the most. I mean, I can't say that Angeline is the most 
notable of the candidates on that side. But on the replacement ballot, we've talked about four people today. I brought her up. We brought up, we were discussing Larry Elder, who is a radio talk show host. Um, we're discussing Kevin Falconer, who's the, who actually was the former governor, of, uh, mayor of San Diego. And we've discussed a YouTube celebrity. Three of the four who get the most press or get the most attention are, I mean, for lack of a better word, they're not they're not professional public servants. Let's leave it at that. Does that not diminish this process for Californians? For anyone who's looking at it from outside the state, I see a election that is up or down on the governor, and then it's a free-for-all circus to see who gets to run California. Does that not necessarily take the credibility and legitimacy away from something as you know, important as this recall election is? Uh, you know, you could make that argument. I certainly could see that, though we've had other people who have not been professional politicians who've won in recent years in other races. But but that, they also uh, but at some pe- some people would argue that some of them have made certain parts of government a laughing stock when they did. Um, but but you do also have the the Jesse Venturas of the world and the Arnold Schwarzeneggers of the world who, you know, whether you agree with them politically or not handled their jobs with professionalism um, in ways that I don't, I don't imagine Angeline would handle the governor's mansion of, of California were she to win. Um, the fact that you even said a few minutes ago that someone could potentially be elected governor of California in two weeks with only 3% of the popular vote, how is that democratic? Well, it's the, the process is democratic, and elections are always like that uh, in America, where we have this first past the post system. That's you know whoever comes out on top and the, the most votes. Uh, that's part of the reason people have liked things like uh, instant runoffs, where New York recently had that, and actually in California, there's a number of cities that have that, where you can't win, but there's also no. Uh, elongated runoff, you just vote one, two, three, four, five. Now, would that work with a 46-person ballot? I don't know. Uh, So it's really a part of this political process that you could always have that. You could always have somebody win with 3% of the vote. It's just we don't seem to have that these days. But, I mean, you're being being very optimistic. I don't know if optimistic is the word, but you're certainly being, you know, very positive about the recall process in California, I sit here and I think, okay, so the rules are all you have to do is get 12% of the entire electorate to sign a petition calling for a recall. What's to stop me in Cal- or, or so- someone like me in California come election day 2022 from standing at the ballot state, at the polling station with a petition that says, did you vote for Gavin Newsom for re-election or did you vote for the Republican? Oh, I voted for the Republican. Here, well, will you sign this petition to recall Gavin Newsom right now? I mean, why, doesn't, doesn't this, couldn't this lead to simply every two years we have a recall against whoever the, the elected governor is? They just know that it's becoming pretty, it's going to be pretty easy now that it's talked about more. All we got to do is get 12% of Californians, 12% of whatever other state or whatever percent. Let's just have the sign-up sheet at the ballot box. Go in, vote for Donald Trump. If he wins, great. If he doesn't, you've already signed this petition and we'll just put a recall election up and we'll do a do-over. How is a recall election not simply a do-over? Uh, well, first of all, you couldn't do that because they're not governor. So you couldn't oh, well, sign well, a petition Well, Trump is not governor, afterwards. but but you get my I think No, no, my, no, not Trump. Point, I'm right? saying you wouldn't be able to get on that election. He'd have to first be governor. So you could well, never Gavin have Newsom it after is governor ballot. now. He is governor. Right, but if he the the recall would only be for that time period between and actually it's not allowed for the last 6 months, but it would not it would only be for the time period that he's still governor. You can't recall somebody until after but you could, why couldn't you office. collect the signatures? Because he's not in office. Because uh, he's not even governor. Okay, you, f- you foiled my plans. I see, so, Joshua. So that but, way, but, 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 yes, but, but it is pretty easy. I mean, especially in this right. internet-connected age, 12% is nothing, is it? 
Well, exactly. It is much easier because of technology. I think you, you've hit on the, hit the nail on the head exactly right. The technology has made recalls much easier. Uh, however, it's still very hard. You know, 1.5 million, I think you need about 800 something, 800 something thousand to get on the ballot for president in all 50 states. So this is double that. Uh, so it's really, it's a There's real challenge. There's nothing that would change. You wouldn't raise that percentage at all? Yeah, I, I would. I would change the percentage. There's some things that I would change. I think that's certainly something to either raise the percentage or turn it into 10 percent of registered voters, which is what they do for L.A. mayor, San Francisco mayor. And that's higher than 12 percent of turnout. Uh, but you could make it 20 percent. That's that's certainly reasonable. Um, I what think state has the change. highest threshold? Do you know? Uh, which some have. Well, New Jersey has 25% of registered voters. That's very hard. Louisiana used to have 33 and a third percent of registered voters, but they recently cut it down. Uh, and so those states don't really have as many recalls. Uh, other states have something that, you know, here's what you would think of, uh, what I call a malfeasance standard, or so other people call a judicial recall standard, but that's kind of confusing because you think it's a recall of a judge, where you have to hit a statutorily delineated reason for the recall. You know, they had to commit a That's crime. That's sort of like they impeachment, had, correct? Right, but a, a people's version of impeachment. So that is possible, uh, but it's, you know, generally not, um, it's very hard to get those on the ballot because it's very hard to prove that crime. So those don't happen as much. I'm, uh, reading, that Kansas, than, I'm reading that Kansas has a 40% threshold. Yes, Kansas, but Kansas, okay, so Kansas is a malfeasance standard state. Also, ah. I believe Kansas, it's 40% of turnout. Versus, of last those casts for the office, correct. Right, so New Jersey is of registered voters, so. Oh, so it is higher, yeah. I mean, but you yeah. know what, but you know what, if someone, if someone, for someone to be recalled, for someone who has been duly elected to be recalled, I feel like you really should have to hit a higher threshold. I mean, for the same reason that we expect 67 members of the Senate to vote to remove a president from office, it, it, recalls shouldn't be p merely partisan, should they? I mean, aren't these states that have thresholds that are high enough to make it difficult to attain, aren't those the states that are making sure that this is a bipartisan push to get rid of, I mean, in California, yes, 12% of, of Republicans is probably hard to pull off. But, but in a state like Kansas, you do want to get 40% because more than likely, it'd be pretty easy to get 12% when most of Kansas votes in one particular way. Um, it, it becomes, doesn't it become incredibly partisan? And how much do these recall battles just make us more divided as a country? Well, there's not too many recall battles that are partisan. Most of them are on the local level. You know, there's school boards and things like that. So it's two schools combining or firing a city manager. Uh, in fact, there's been only 39 state legislative recalls in U.S. history. There's only been three governors uh, who faced recall, one in 1921, one in 2003, and 2012. 2012 now, yeah. it'll be four. Um, so so four action. in the last 20, three in the last 20 years. I think right. people so are, my point is, Joshua, I think people are starting to pick up on the idea that this is something they can pull. Don't you? Well, it depends on the success. I think if, if Newsom survives... Well, do I want to spend my time and effort doing this? Now, it is possible that, you know, raising the totals could be the answer uh, for many people. There is but, a push to recall John Bell Edwards in Louisiana right now, and it probably won't get on the ballot, not because Louisiana doesn't have enough Republicans to oust a Democrat in that very red state, but because Louisiana has a higher threshold, which means that in order to get rid of John Bell Edwards, they need more than just Republicans. They also need some Democrats to say he's done wrong. So, Oh, yes. And in, in fact, last year, there were every governor, basically, who could face a recall threat faced one. There were 15 of them uh, throughout the country, and John Bell Edwards was one of them. And the governor of Idaho and the governor of Georgia uh, who were Republicans, faced them. The Idaho governor faced it from the Republican side because of the mask mandates. But none of them got anywhere. Uh, so it is really this, it is a hard a hard standard. And what made this one happen was that extra 120 days. Now, that's just not to say that- It seems to me you, like so many people saying, I don't like everything that you're doing, so I'm going to vote to recall you. Listen, I don't like a lot of 
that a lot of people who are elected do. But I recognize that they won the election. And I voted and I did what I could to make sure the other person won, but I lost. And as long as they aren't breaking the law or, you know, killing people in some way, then I'm going to do my best to make sure they lose the next election instead of pitching a temp. I mean, I hate to say it's pitching a temper tantrum, but instead of trying to demand a do over, it just feels to me like saying this election was stolen from me. I'm going to, you know, try it in the courts for a while. And then when that doesn't work, I'll do a recall. But, you know, yeah, the, you know, that that's it's certainly an argument against the recall. And it is one of the arguments that people have used. Uh, it's just really, if the, I think if the people are very upset about it, then, yeah, get a ballot measure on the ballot and end the recall or change it radically. Okay. I, think I, both wanna of ask, those are I want to ask you a few questions. We've got a lot of questions in from California this week, specifically um, to you. Um, Jesse from Oakland asks, is even if a Republican wins, will they be able to get anything done with the power of the Democrats across the rest of the state? They will be very limited, whoever the Republican is. The Democrats have a veto-proof majority in both the set, both houses, and they also have other uh, other offices like insurance commissioner, things like that. So as opposed to New York, which has an extremely powerful governor, California does not have anywhere near that power. That said, they'll be able to do stuff with the mask mandates, with the vaccines. But again, also, it's only a year that they'll be in office. So there, there's a limit. Rachel from Irvine asks, are there people who would vote for a recall because they just generally aren't happy? Yes, definitely. And I think that's what happened last time. Uh, I, I'm sure that's the case, that there are people who do that. Uh, but Hey, explain that question to me. Sorry, sorry, Rachel. I just want you, Joshua, to explain to me what she's asking. What happened last time? People didn't necessarily dislike Gray Davis. Is that what you're saying? Or they're just... Yeah, that they, they dislike what's happening in California. They dislike that the economy is not as good for them as, as it could be. Uh, that's always what happens in an election. People vote no because things aren't going well. And that's why incumbents lose very frequently. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case here. Haley, two more. Haley from Fresno asks, why are recalls so rushed? It seems like they, it would make the election open only to the rich. Is that uh, Well, in this, case, in this case, the Democrats sort of rushed it. it. It rushed just because that was the schedule. I think they don't want too much time delayed between when we start this recall and when the guy goes to the ballot because otherwise... Uh, you know, who knows what type of shenanigans could be pulled in office. Imagine it's not Gavin Newsom. Imagine it's a city councilman or mayor who has been accused of stealing money. Uh, so they want it happening fast. And, you know, compared to European elections where you could call a snap election or Canada, those mm -hmm. elections happen, you know, very quickly. So we're, we think of this long process, but it's, I would it's appreciate, really kind of an appreciate American thing. as a person who lives in a swing state, I would appreciate a short election cycle. <laughs> so yes, stop complaining, exactly. Haley from Fresno. Um, last one. Peter from Los Angeles says or asks, why has the media not make a, made a big deal about Larry Elder possibly becoming California's first black governor? Um, you know, they've made a big deal about Larry Elder. I don't know that that, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It depends on the, the media. You know, it's the whole, the whole process makes it kind of strange. I'm sure there's been articles about that. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I can't say really just because it's whatever the media chooses you, okay, to well, focus on. Well, it. could it possibly be that they don't think he will become the next, uh, the first black governor of California? I'm going to ask you now to give me your your odds here. Do you think that this election will will oust Governor Newsom from his position, or do you think that he'll survive it? Well, uh, you know, the odds are definitely in Newsom's favor at the moment. Um, I'll tell you one stat that I really like uh, from the previous recalls of these, these three governors. Um, the races, the results have always been pretty closely correlated to their election. So, Gray Davis got 47% in 2002, 44% in 2003. Scott Walker, 52 point something percent in 2012, 53.1 in, 2000, uh, in 2010, and then 53.1 in 2012. And Lynn Frazier, the governor from North Dakota in 1921, 
won with 51, 40, 51 to 49, lost 51 49. So there's <laughs> like a, a close correlation here uh, for governors, not for other offices necessarily. So, you know, that's one thing. Uh, turnout, we've expected, a lot of people have said turnout they expect to be low. That has not been the case with gubernatorial recalls. They've actually gone up a lot. Schwarzenegger in 2003 had much higher turnout than in 2002 or than in 2006. Same I'm assuming it's Scott on the TV Walker. a lot out there. I mean, obviously, we don't hear about it anywhere else, but I'm assuming you're inundated with it there, yeah? But, uh, no, you know, well, I don't watch that much TV, I got to admit. I'm surprised that I'm not getting too many pamphlets. I, I hear it on the radio and I get... Uh, internet ads uh, and Facebook ads. So, so you yeah. hear about it, though. People are not unaware yes. of it in California. It's hard to say because I'm somebody who's searching for recalls, so I'm going to get Fair all enough. the ads. So which which I'll use as an opportunity to plug your book, Recall Elections from Alexander Hamilton to Gavin Newsom. If you're someone who's listening and you're interested in this type of I mean, I'm fascinated by the fact that you can do it in the first place, uh, period. Um, uh, Joshua Spivak has definitely it literally, like I said, wrote the book on recall elections in America. Um, if you're interested in something like this, check out his book, Recall Elections, from Alexander Hamilton to Gavin Newsom. Um, and you can, I assume, find that uh, on Amazon or uh, online. You can, we'll make sure that a link to, to Joshua's information is in our show notes. But, you know, most of our shows, Joshua, we talk about this division in this country between not just conservatives and progressives, uh, not just by race or by socio, but just so much division and the fact that so many of us, as we've discovered over the past year or so of doing this, so many of us have dug our heels into one side or another. Recall elections, to me, feel almost dangerously like they are positioned to simply exacerbate those divisions. So um, it may be tough to ask you this question, but I'm going to anyway. You're somebody who seems to be so fascinated and love the fact that, oh, we're not just going to fight every four years. Let's have an extra a bonus fight in the middle of them. So I, I do wonder if this is sort of the way things are going, if recalls are happening more and more often nowadays than they used to, how the heck are we going to get along? I think that's a problem that we have all over. So I don't know that recalls are the big issue for it, but I, I certainly see that point. Um, you know, because th there's a different philosophy behind the recalls. Uh, it's a philosophy about what government is, whether the, the elected official should be a trustee, somebody that you're electing because they're smarter, they're, you know, wisdom, they have better experience, even if they don't, you don't agree with their position or whether somebody should be a representative, a delegate, an advocate, somebody who will get up there and do what you want them to do and vote that way. So the recall is a big thumb on the scale for that delegate advocate model. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be necessarily a partisan thing. And so far, it hasn't been that much, you know, and its power is nowhere near its direct democracy uh, relative the initiative. The initiative is so much more powerful and so much more important in U.S. history than the recall. But it, it has this stark feeling of, oh, we're kicking this guy out, rather than let's change the tax laws that are going to radically reshape the government. So in that way, we're not sure of what's going to happen. But the recall does, it certainly has this feeling of, well, one side or the other. Uh, the House divided is not going to stand. And so the recall may be a problem in that way. You know, I don't, but it so far hasn't been. It's not available on the federal level, so that really limits its, its potential.